Hi guys, Frank here with Bill Drone, and this is my 1994 Chevy Cheyenne C1500. It's got two-wheel drive, it's got the 4.3 liter V6 motor, and it's got just over 209,000 miles on the odometer. I love my truck, but what we're looking at here is a pretty thick stack of receipts for all the service work that I've had done on this truck. Aside from this lift kit that I just put on recently, the Rough Country 4-inch lift and the 17-inch uh, Vision D window wheels, which I did that, that was purely for fun. Everything else, all the other paperwork in that stack, that was all stuff that this truck needed fixed and there's still a lot more to do. So today in this video, I want to talk about 10 common issues with the 1988 through 1998 CK pickup trucks real quick before we actually jump into those 10 common issues let's talk about some GM pickup truck history full-size GM pickup trucks are a staple of American culture they have a rich history of hauling everything from construction materials to hay bales to camping gear and they're even a great choice for hauling your family around and General Motors has been one of the most popular truck manufacturers in the US for decades Chevrolet introduced its first purpose-built truck, the One-Ton, in 1918, the same year the company merged with GM. Rapid Motor Vehicle Company, a precursor to GMC, produced some of the world's first commercial trucks before joining GM in 1909 and merging with Reliance Motor Company to form GMC Truck. GM's modern full-size pickups, the Chevy Silverado and the GMC Sierra, are two of the most popular trucks on the road today. GM first introduced the Silverado and the Sierra in 1999, but the company produced these trucks' predecessor, the CK pickup, for many years before that. C meant two-wheel drive, while K indicated four-wheel drive. GM used the names Silverado and Sierra during this time, but instead of describing a model, they described trim packages for the CK trucks. The fourth generation of CK trucks, which became available in 1988, featured a more modern design and were the first to use the GMT 400 platform. So in this video, we'll look at 10 common issues with GM CK pickup trucks produced from 1988 to 1998. This issue is the windshield wiper motor component failure. The windshield wipers on models made between 1990 and 1999 may stop working intermittently due to a defective wiper motor control board. Auto manufacturers issued recalls for this problem on some models. If you experience trouble with your windshield wipers, check with a dealer to see if there's a recall for your truck. If you have a faulty wiper motor control board, your wipers may at times stop working, fail to turn on, or keep running after you turn them off. You might also find your wipers only work on one speed setting. When the wipers are not working, you should hear the motor control box buzzing. As a temporary fix to this problem, lightly tap on the control box and the blade should start working again. For a more permanent fix, replace the wiper motor control board. Number two is coolant leaks or oil leaks from intake manifold gaskets. The intake manifold gaskets in 1988 and 1998 uh, GMCK pickup trucks also often develop external engine oil or coolant leaks. These vehicles may also develop internal coolant leaks that cause coolant to mix with the engine oil, which can damage the engine. This problem most often occurs at around 175,000 miles. To fix this problem, replace the intake manifold gasket, which will most likely cost somewhere between $300 and $450. Common issue number three with the CK pickup truck is front wheel speed sensor failure. This is another common problem with these vehicles is that the front wheel speed sensors or anti-lock brake system ABS sensors may fail. This issue may cause the ABS warning light to turn on or the ABS to activate erratically. Many users report the ABS activates on dry roads at slow speeds. You're most likely to start noticing this problem after 160,000 miles. To fix this problem, you need to replace the wheel speed sensor, which costs between $150 and $200. Common issue number four is steering assist sensor failure. Many drivers of Chevy and GMC pickup trucks made after 1997 have reported their truck will suddenly lurch to one side, especially while making long sweeping turns. If you feel the steering jerking while turning, the cause is most likely a bad steering assist sensor. Specifically, the culprit is the electronic variable orifice. 
known as the EVO sensor, which is on the steering shaft and determines how much power steering assist to provide. When this sensor goes bad, it may change the amount of power steering assist unevenly, causing the truck to veer to one side. Fixing the steering sensor should fix this problem. The EVO sensor costs around $100 and takes around 20 minutes to replace. Common issue number five with the CK series truck is power door lock actuator failure. This issue is less common than some of the others on this list, but numerous drivers of GM trucks made from 1990 to 1999 have reported their door locks stopped working after around 160,000 miles. This issue may affect the door locking, unlocking, or both. A failed door actuator is the usual culprit. Replacing the failed actuators, which cost between $100 and $300, should fix this issue. Talk about common issue number six, broken door handles. That's another common problem, uh, uh, is that door handles on these older pickup trucks often break. This issue can affect both the indoor and outdoor handle and most often happens around 140,000 miles. The door may not open or unlock or the handle itself may physically break. Typically it's not possible to fix these broken handles and the only solution is to actually replace it. Let's talk about issue number seven that's idling problems. That's definitely something I had with this truck when I first got it. Got it settled out now and, and honestly uh, idling issues could be a lot of things with these trucks. But one of the common things, one of the common issues uh, is that the throttle body gasket can develop a vacuum leak. And to fix this problem, you need to replace any failed gaskets. On average, this problem occurs at about 160,000 miles. Common issue number eight with the CK pickup truck is abnormal noise from the front or rear differential. If you drive a CK pickup truck made between 1988 and 1998, at around 165,000 miles, you may start to hear an abnormal noise in the front or rear differential. You may hear a clunking, banging, or grinding noise and feel a vibration coming from under the driver's seat. This problem is often caused by worn bearings, but could also be a result of another fault. You may be able to fix this problem by replacing the axle bearings if you catch it early, but you often have to do a full rebuild of the affected differential. Common issue number nine, alternator failure. In older CK pickups, the alternator may eventually fail, causing the battery to die and possibly an abnormal noise to occur. This may or may not cause a dash warning light to come on. If your alternator fails, you will need to replace it, which typically costs around $300 to $400. This problem occurs on average at around 125,000 miles. Common issue number 10 is internal distributor faults. Numerous drivers of CK pickups have reported that their truck develops an internal fault in the distributor. Although this problem isn't as common as some of the others on the list, you may hear a squealing noise coming from the distributor and the issue may cause the engine to run roughly or stall. The check engine light may or may not come on. You'll need to overhaul or replace the internal distributor to correct this problem. Start watching out for internal distributor fault issues at around 130,000 miles. All right, guys, so that's 10 common issues with the CK pickup truck from 1988 to 1998, but that is no way uh, the definitive list. There's a lot of other things that could be issues with these trucks like throttle position sensors. These, uh, the 4.3 liter V6 is known for the throttle position sensor and stuff like that. So there's a lot of issues with these trucks, but does that make them less fun to drive and own? No, not at all. I love this truck, wouldn't trade it in for anything. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this video up. If you found this information helpful, informative or entertaining, please like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.